Let me say once again, good morning and welcome to Lindsley Avenue. I hope everybody's doing all right today. It's good to see some people we haven't seen in a while. It's good to have some visitors, some new faces. We appreciate you being here. Uh, we have a number of people who are still not here because of illness or travel. So uh, we appreciate everyone who is here. The sign on our front door says, all are welcome. And of all places in the world, we really mean it here at Lansley Avenue. You're always welcome. Please come back. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about masks. Masks. And so, in order to do that, we're going to do something I did a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to ask our young people who are here to come and meet me down here up front on the front row. I don't have a mobile mic, so I'm just going to have to use my usual indoor-outdoor voice. Well, you guys know <clears throat> that tomorrow is a pretty important day. Halloween. No, actually, it's somebody's birthday, but we won't talk about that. Uh, it actually is Halloween. So many times on Halloween, people uh, try to be someone or pretend to be someone they're really not, right? So I got a couple of questions for you. Let's we'll see what this looks like. I am going to ask you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. But what I want to ask is, who am I? Oh, you can open your eyes. Hulk. All right, the Hulk. Yeah. Okay. So close your eyes again. Okay. Now open them up once more. Who am I? Spider-Man. 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 Okay. Close your eyes, please. Okay, so who am I now? Can I open your eyes? I'm Iron Man. Iron Man. Are you sure it's not really just me? Yes. Alright. Alright. Okay. Close your eyes. <clears throat> Alright, you guys. Let's do it one more time. Open your eyes. Batman. Batman. So you're saying that's who I am, right? That really swell here. Who you're pretending to be. That that next even though you were saying I was Spider-Man and Iron Man, I know I could be mistaken for Iron Man anytime. No, I actually was thinking that. You, you were saying that I, I was Batman? You mean it's really me all along? Yeah, I should have said you that. Okay, so here's what I want to do. <clears throat> Thank you for your help. You guys come up here and pick one of these, by the way, there's also a, I think that's a bat girl. You can be whoever you want. Can I just see? No. You have two faces? No. We'll talk about that later. Okay. But choose what you want. Hey, thank you for the help. Thank you for the help. So as we were saying, tomorrow is Halloween. I do appreciate these kids being well to put up with me because they, they put up with a lot. They do. This leads, Halloween leads to one of my favorite days of the year, the day after Halloween, because candy goes on sale. That's always my favorite day of the year. Uh, the only reason I enjoy Halloween is because I know it's coming after that. That's the 50 and 70 percent off sale. Uh, I'm in Walgreens the morning after Halloween, and it's tough to kick me out because I'm trying to load up on cheap candy. Well, many kids are going to wear masks and go house to house to get candy. It doesn't have to be, it really doesn't have to be a terribly dark day. I know a lot of people uh, don't, don't like Halloween because, I mean, let's face it, people look like they're wearing a side of beef on their face. Uh, some of them dress up and things like that, but it doesn't have to be. None of these uh, masks that we were looking at here were really in any way dark. I mean, I know, I know Batman has a dark side to him from his past and everything, but they were still generally, uh, you know, not evil-looking kind of masks, right? Well, the fun part, I remember the fun part of wearing a mask when I was a kid was being able to try to fool my neighbors. You'd have a costume on. The uh, ones I remember were like Underdog. Anybody here remember Underdog as a kid, right? You'd have this very flammable, as it turns out, very flammable costume, and I had one of these single uh, plastic punk press masks that would have the rubber band strip that hurt my ears holding the underdog face. 
and you'd go to some neighbor's house and you'd say, trick or treat. And even though the neighbors in the houses nearby knew me, most times because I was running through their yard playing games and stuff like that, right? They would know I was cheating. When I had the mask off, they would sit there and they would look, now I wonder who this is. It doesn't ever happen to you. You'd be at somebody's front door trick or treating or something and say, I wonder who this is. And they would try to guess and I'd kind of laugh and oh, it's not Freddy. It's not Sam or any of that kind of stuff. They would ask for hints. You know, give me a hint. I'll play baseball or something like that. They were trying to figure out who I was. I loved it when they finally gave up and asked me to tell them who I was. There was something very thrilling, very, a lot of fun, thrilling about hiding behind the mask, being somebody I wasn't, being somebody I wasn't. Now look, I know we have all grown terribly weary wearing masks because of COVID, even though sometimes, depending on circumstances and where we are, we may still do it. It really is great to see faces again. Uh, when I started taking my mask off, people started complaining. But, uh, you know, it's, it's good to see faces again. It's, it's, it's hard to know what somebody's going through when they were wearing masks, right? Well, the problem is, even though we were kids and wearing a mask, a lot of times when we grow up, we keep wearing masks because sometimes it seems easier to hide behind a mask it's not really a plastic pulp right look at the picture on the screen these two people are talking and the one on the right has got a mask doesn't it now in this case right he's got it on a stick and he's holding it up that's not the kind of mask i'm talking about we put on a mask because we hide behind Something we really are. In this case, what's he doing? What's he doing, Emma Max? What's he doing up here? What's he really feeling? He's feeling angry. He's, looks like he's looking at his feeling mad or something, right? Yeah. Is that? Like he had a problem with that person the other day, um, or that he had a problem with that person today. Um, and he said that it was okay, but he didn't really it was still. I like that. Max just said it looks as if the person. May have had a problem with the person on the left the day before or today, and he's he's pretending, right? He's pretending that everything is fine, but it still looks like he's really not fine. Uh, surely, no married couple has ever had a problem saying, "You okay? You upset about something?" I'm fine, right? The, we do that a lot as people. So, have you ever been the person here hiding behind that mask? Have you ever talked to someone you later figured out you were doing this kind of thing? A mask is designed to fool others into assuming that my day is going well and I'm in control of my life. This is sometimes me. Maybe that's sometimes you in both places, right? You walk into a church building. Walk into a store. Walk into a get-together of some family members. And what does it look like? Sometimes masks look really bad, right? And on the inside, I don't feel anything like that at all. It can be me putting a face on. I even have that language, right? I'm going to put a happy face on. When in fact, I'm really not feeling that way at all. I can put a mask on to hide, to, to hide my sadness, my depression, and feeling hurt. Look at these people, both of them. In each of those two cases on the right, they look like they're feeling sad or depressed, don't they? But by wearing the mask, they hide it from other people. Well, if all you see is the Hulk, right? You don't really have any understanding at all of what's going on with me, do you? You're like my neighbor who doesn't know who's trick or treating in the front door. It turns out people have been wearing masks like that for a long, long time. People try to wear masks in the Bible. Um, look at some of these passages from the Bible. Psalm 69, we studied Psalm 69 in a Wednesday night class, one of the Psalms of complaint. 
David here in verse 5 says, Oh God, you know my folly. You know the wrongs I have done, and they are not hidden from you. You know, if I did something yesterday that God would not have been happy about, do you think he didn't see it? Nothing that we do or things that we don't do, none of that is hidden from God. Why do I try to pretend that he doesn't know? David here is very, very truthful. You know the mistakes I have made. Nothing is hidden from you. We would do well to remember that. Because some people try to put on a mask and pretend, even to God, that everything is all okay. Luke 22, 47 and 48. Let's look at this for a moment. While he, Jesus, who he is right there, while he was still talking, there came a crowd and... The man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading him. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Well, Judas is in effect here wearing a mask. He's hiding behind a, a mask, as it were, of friendship and affection. I mean, he's greeting Jesus with a kiss, the embrace, the greeting of a friend. Jesus sees right through the mask, doesn't he? Judas may have told the people, look, I'm going to go and I'll greet him. I'll be a friend. And then after I've greeted him, I can appear shocked too when all of you swoop in and arrest Jesus. Maybe that's what Judas was thinking, right? Otherwise, he could have come to the query and said, there he is. That would have been a pretty open betrayal. It seemed like Judas may have wanted to hide that he was betraying Jesus into the hands of these people. Jesus could see his true intent. Right? The passage that Phil read for us earlier, we'll read on either side of it, Luke chapter 12, here it's verses 1, 2, and 3. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. That's a pretty large group. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, Beware of the yeast. Of the Pharisees, some people may do bread starter, right? You may try to make your own bread, sourdough bread, sometimes the part of this stuff. Bread starter, you got to feed it. So I got some creature growing in my house. I'm doing bread starter, right? Hopefully it'll stay in the jar. It'll sneak up on me in the middle of the night. But you got yeast. It grows, and that's what you can use to make bread rise. <laughs> Were the Pharisees carrying around bread starter? No, that's not what he was talking about. It's their hypocrisy. He spells it out. Their hypocrisy. The word that shows up as hypocrisy right here comes from the word the Greek people use for an actor. An actor. They're pretending. These people are pretending. And when they did drama back in the first century, the time of Jesus, people would walk out on stage and they would have, like we saw in some of those pictures, a stick that would have a face on it. And this face might be the, the beautiful heroine. We needed to be saved from the monster. And so you might have a 50-year-old man coming out holding that, and he was the, the heroine who needed to be saved. He was pretending to be the young woman. He was acting. Now, it's really good when you have a great actor, somebody that makes you believe in a drama presentation, that they really are so light, or that they really are you know, somebody that they're pretending to be. Problem is, some people act all the time. They pretend to be something they're not. It's called hypocrisy, a hypocrite. It became a bad word. At first it meant actor. And if it's confined to the stage or drama or a movie or TV, I mean, if you're seeing some of that, you don't want a bad actor. Nobody would want to watch me trying to give lines out. Yes, we're all in danger. I mean, nobody would want me to be an actor. So it's great to have an actor, someone that really can pretend well in those environments. It's really bad when you've got someone who can pretend well outside of those circumstances. That's what Jesus says the Pharisees were doing. Beware of what the Pharisees may do to you. They may spread this. They may convince you you should pretend too. What he says, 
The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. All the acting, all the pretending is going to have a bright light shown on it. All the stuff that's been kept under wraps is going to really and truly be shown. Right? Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the rooftops or housetops for all to hear. The Pharisees in particular would pretend to be these righteous people when inside they were every bit as sinful as all the people around them. Well, we should not try to hide things from God. It's never going to work. We should not try to hide things from each other either. We are family and family's here to help. How do I know, how do you know whether I need help or if I know how do you need help if when we come in here we're doing this? The Hulk doesn't need any help. How can I help you if I can't see you? How can you help me if you don't see me? All places on the face of the earth. It's when we gather here as God's people, when we gather here as family, and here we mean that. You can't hide things from each other. If something's bothering you, if you have been angry and you know you shouldn't have been, this is the place to say, I have a problem. If you've been down or depressed, if something's been hurting you, if something is bothering you, this is where it's all to be brought out into the open in order to help. What's our theme for the year? Here at Lindsay Avenue, remember? Galatians 6 2. Help carry one another's burdens. And in this way, you will obey the law of Christ. We are to bear one another's burdens. We're to help carry it. If something's too heavy for you, I'm here to help. We are here to help. You can't do that if I don't see that you need help or you're hiding that you need help. It's a big, big thing to think about because. Some of you may disagree with this. I really suspect everybody in here today wears a mask sometimes. I know I'm looking at all of you, and I know you're looking at me as well. We all do it. How you doing? Fine. And in fact, I have no idea what you're going through. We should not tell them. There's another aspect of this hiding. One is, I don't want you to see what I'm really going through. There's another aspect of hiding called camouflage. There's something hiding in that picture. Can you see it? Where do you, what do you think hiding in that picture? Grass. Grass. Well, if you see the grass, the grass isn't doing a very good job of hiding. <laughs> That's great. Anybody see something hiding in that picture? It's blended in pretty good, isn't it? I'll tell you, it's in the bottom right corner of the screen. There's an antelope hiding in this picture. There's the face, two eyes and the mouth. That's pretty hidden, isn't it? That antelope is blended into his or hers surroundings pretty well. That's what camouflage is. Camouflage doesn't work very well if you've got a blinking red light going off in the dark. That's not camouflage. That antelope's pretty camouflage, right? How about this? Yeah. Some kind of lizard or something. That still looks like a leaf. I can see this one a little bit easier. Oh, wow, that looks like a leaf. To some predator, it may just look like a leaf, right? You're already looking now for something hiding. It's not what it appears to be. 
But that's an amazing job of camouflage right there in nature with this lizard. How about this? What do you see? I speak up a little louder for me. I think it's the head of a snake. Head of a snake? What do you think it is? I think it's a spider. It is a spider. Right here in the middle. There are the two eyes. Right here. Legs. But that sure looks like it's part of the tree branch, doesn't it? The two eyes and the legs and all this kind of stuff. Imagine you reach up to the ground on and stand yourself on that branch. You've got a spider. 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 Blending in. Camouflage. How about here? Now that one's a little easier to see, isn't it? What is it? Some kind of grasshopper like that. He's driven away by the antenna and the eyeball, but from back here, that sure looks like a leaf on that weeping willow tree or something similar to it, doesn't it? Camouflage. In the same way that we should not and really ought not wear a mask when we're here. Too often, we wear a mask different way when we leave here. We want to camouflage ourselves when we go out into the world. We want to blend into the world and not stick out in the world. We want to look like everybody else. We don't want to be different. And that's not the way we're supposed to be. Romans chapter 2, verse 12. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly on the inside by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and pleasing to Him and is perfect. We cannot, we cannot blend in with the world. Just because the world says something is okay, or the world says something is good, or the world says something is fine, has no bearing on whether we as followers of Jesus agree with it. We may need to be different than the antelope. We may need to stick out when the world is off its rails. The world is a sinful place. We have been called out of the world. The only way that works is if we are different from the world. We have to be godly, more like God than like the world. So what do we do? How do we, how do we fix that problem? We need to be the same person on the outside of the doors and inside the doors. Don't have a Jekyll and Hyde kind of personality. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be godly when we come and worship with our family and then Nobody can tell any difference. Nobody has a clue that you're a follower of Jesus during the week. Be the same. Be godly wherever you are. Love God and love others. Too many people in the world, first of all, they don't love God. They wouldn't be the world in that sense if they love God. And they don't really love others. They're out for themselves. God's first. Other people should come second. I'm last. I am last. And that's got to be different from everybody else because so many people, they may help others and love some of other people. They do that sometimes. I mean, it's not like everybody in the world is a maniac or a crazy person. But I need to do it as much as possible. I come last. If we don't show our love for people, we come across as someone who lacks compassion. We don't seem to care about other people. We're simply in it for the, the pie and the sky by and by, right? We're going to heaven, don't really care what happens to people here and now, that's wrong, that's wrong. We can't live the life of an unbeliever when we're not here as a family either. That's the way I need to look as a follower of Jesus. If I look like someone else that's in the grave, I'm not living differently. I've allowed the world to change me rather than me changing the world. The eternal life that we gain when Jesus died for our sins means we have died to our old ways. 
question. We've got one more slide. I'll say a few more things. The question I want you to be thinking about is, have I? Have I really died to the old ways? Well, I want to encourage each of us to live for God every single day. Don't reach for a mask to hide behind or a mask to try to blend in. You know, I'm going to ask Robbie to do something. I know she'll probably have it done within 15 minutes, knowing Robbie. You know, many times you come into a place, doctor's offices today, or sometimes churches or buildings, and what? They'll have a sign up that says, even now, after this long with COVID, it'll say something like, you know, please put on a mask when you enter the building. I know we're all tired of that, but I understand. I know some places do it, right? <laughs> I want to see if you can find a way to help us put up a box and a sign that'll say, please take your mask off when you enter Wednesday night. I'm not talking about that kind of mask, right? I'm not talking about a COVID mask. I want to remind each of us, and I think a sign would be a great way to do it. Maybe in a little pretend box over here. Leave our masks at the door. We shouldn't have them on anyway. But if I've got one on when I'm out there in the world, because I don't want people who are in the world, people that don't know me very well, to not see what's bothering me, leave it at the door. Because we're family. And whatever's bothering one of us should bother all of us. And we are all here to love and to help one another. Leave your mask at the door. Why are we here to love one another? We love others because God loved us. And he loved us to send his son Jesus to die for me and all the mistakes and sins I have made. He did it for you. And he says, if you want to come home and live with me, if you want forgiveness of your past mistakes, if you need to start a new life, you need to change your mind and your actions to live differently, be the red in the sea of gray. And you need to become a follower of Jesus. You do that by understanding what Jesus did for you, changing your life, and dying to your old ways by being immersed in water so that God will forgive your sins to be baptized. If there's some way we can help you today, please, please leave your mask where it is now and come as we stand and sing.